Winter is approaching. We gotta talk about riding in cold weather and staying warm. Coming up next on Goldwing Docs. I live in Ohio and for probably four or five months out of the season, the weather is not really conducive to riding. Once it gets cold, you know, well into November, uh, most people have put their motorcycles away for the winter. I try to ride mine until the first snow of the season. Once it snows and there's salt on the road, bike goes away because uh, there's no rust proofing on motorcycles. And as soon as you ride in that salt, you can just kiss your frame goodbye. So really uh, salt is the end of my riding season. I also don't ride if it's below freezing because, well, I, I, I don't like riding on ice because I like my bike upright. But riding down to say 35 degrees uh, is it's a cold experience. If you're not properly dressed and don't have the correct equipment, you can get severely cold, you can get hypothermic. Now, one of the symptoms of hypothermia is impairment of judgment. So you might be riding along and you're kind of cold and shivering thinking, but you know what, I'm right, I can, I can tough through this. But that's your impaired judgment saying that you can get through this. Or in fact, you could be in serious uh, danger because you're making impaired decisions riding your motorcycle. So how do you stay warm? Well, I'll tell you how I stay warm. Heated gear. Now you can put on many, many layers, but that means every time the temperature changes a little bit, which it can do when you go in and out of sun or through different areas, you gotta put on and shuck layers. And where are you gonna put all those layers? So a simple solution to that is something like this heated jacket from Gerbings, which has micro wires woven throughout it and a couple wires at the bottom. So what I do is I have these coiled wires that plug into my bike down here. And those are hooked up to my bike PC, which controls my heat. If you wanna know more about that bike PC controller that does my heat among other things, I'll put a link to a video uh, describing it and demonstrating it in the description below. So once I've got those wires plugged into my bike, my jacket has two wires that then plug into those two cables. One of these cables heats the jacket and the other of the cables runs out to these connectors to the sleeves. And that's where you can plug in your gloves. What's nice about that is when it's, it's not so cold, you can turn the heat down and you're fine. When it gets really cold, just turn the heat up and you're war still warm without having to actually add more layers. For really cold days, I also have a set of boot insoles that slip inside your boots and are also electric that plug into the same place and it just has a little Y adapter. Now I have gone through a lot of different warm gloves. I got these here that are leather and they've got some insulation in them. I've got these winter gloves here. These are more like uh, snowmobile gloves with a large cuff. Um, they're kind of soft goat skin. They have no armor on them. They're not great for motorcycling, but they're very warm. Then I have my Gerbings gloves. Uh, these have really fine micro wires in them that so they heat up as soon as you turn it on I mean, they're hot within seconds. They're really great uh, They have some armor on the on the finger joints nothing on the knuckles really nothing on the palm a little bit of extra protection on this area of the palm But again, it's soft goat skin. So it doesn't have a lot of abrasion resistance Probably don't really want to come off the bike wearing these but they are super warm uh, they're relatively waterproof. You can, they're leather, so you can just spray them with a leather waterproofer and that works well. Uh, the problem with Gerbings is that Gerbings is no longer Gerbings. Gerbings sold the company to another manufacturer and the newer products they make are, I hate to say, not the same quality as this old Gerbings stuff. I know it used to be Gerbings was the gold standard for heated clothing. That's unfortunately no longer the case. So with that said, I got an email from a company in China, as I often do, saying, hey, we've got this product. Would you like to review it on your YouTube channel? And uh, usually the answer to that is no. Um, but this time it was heated gloves. And I thought, OK, well, that's probably fairly timely. Uh, it's cold weather out. People may be looking for, for some heated gear. So I said, sure, uh, here's my size. And they sent me these gloves. So let's have a look and see what's inside. And the brand is Iron Gia's. Um, I will put a link to these. They're on Amazon and I'll put a link to them down in the description below. Uh, it comes with some instructions. It basically says hook them into your bike uh, the same way as my existing gloves do. It just It says plug them into your 12 volt battery and it shows a diagram of some wires. So I got this and I thought, okay, well that's 
interesting because most gloves you buy are battery powered nowadays but okay they sent me these 12 volt gloves and uh, they come with a set of wires here so they've got these wires here that hooks into your battery and it's got a fuse on it so it is fused that's nice I, and it is a three amp fuse so they don't draw much obviously if they're fused at three amps so that's good because one of the issues with some of the heated gear especially jackets and pants they can draw a lot of current especially if, if you and your co-rider are both uh, wearing heated gear you may need to upsize your electrical system to be able to handle that okay so they have this basically that has a coaxial power output at the end which i won't be using because obviously i don't need it i already have it built into my bike but nice that it comes with that and then it comes with this cable here, which has one end that plugs into the battery lead, and then these two ends, which you would then thread up through your sleeves and plug into the gloves. So it does say that the gloves have 3M Thinsulate in it, insulation, which is nice. Thinsulate is high quality insulation. It's not waterproof like Gore-Tex, but it does provide a, a reasonable level of uh, thermal insulation. The Gerbings gloves have a separate heat controller that is separate to your your gloves or your jacket or whatever these have it built into the the gloves themselves it has a button that you just push and as you push it you can go low medium high off that sort of thing and you can do that individually for each glove it does have considerable knuckle uh, armor as well as finger joint armor uh, i noticed that there is what would originally have been a vent on these gloves but that's been closed up armor on the thumb we've got a nice piece of armor on the uh, palm here and inside the glove on the leather we have rubber so you can easily grip your levers and and twist your throttle it does have a piece of material on the index finger on both gloves that allows these gloves to work with touchscreen devices nice touch there's a little bit of armor on the uh, pinky on the outside of the pinky there Next day after these gloves arrived, I got another box from the same company and in it were a couple battery packs. They're lithium ion cells. These are not your typical flat lithium ion batteries. Each it has a three 18650 cells inside that they've just shrink wrapped together. And then there has a, a cable that connects the three and the three cells in series. So lithium ion cells are 3.7 volts. So three together would be 11.1. If you look at the rating on this, exactly 11.1. So that's what they've done is they put three cells in series. That's a little bit worrisome. The charger is a 12 volt charger and it has two outputs in parallel. You can tell when I plug this in, it's actually back feeding the charger because the charger then lights up. Problem with this, typically when you want to charge lithium ion cells, you want to do it individually because each cell is going to charge a little bit differently. And if you're charging them in series like this and one of them has a lesser charge, you're now forcing current through the other two cells to feed the third. That's just not a good way of doing it. If you, if you look at a proper lithium ion charger, anytime you have batteries like this, each cell is charged individually or there's a controller board in there that distributes the voltage amongst them and charges them that way. This is just three cells wired in series with a plug coming out the end. Uh, I'm a little bit wary of using, or at least charging these cells. These are 2,200 milliamp hours each. That's an awful lot of energy in here at 11 volts. That's, that's uh, 24 watt hours in each of these. That's, I mean, if one of these were to rupture and fail, that's a, I mean, it's almost a bomb. It, you really got to be careful with this kind of stuff. Second thing I, I'm a little bit worried about is, again, we aren't charging these individually. They want you just to charge them both at the same time. So now not only are you charging from the charger to the batteries, but one battery, if it's lower, could feed the other battery. So now you've got the case where you have unregul unregulated voltage from one cell going in, cell pack going into the other pack. Again, I, I really am not a fan of this design. This is really, um, I mean, it's inexpensive, but it's, it's not safe. So I did charge these, however, I charged them one at a time. I plugged it in, I watched it, I waited until it turned green so I knew it was fully charged. I disconnected it and I charged the other one. I really don't wanna have these both plugged in at the same time. And I'm certainly not gonna leave these unattended overnight or anything like that. I, I mean, while I was charging these, they were sitting right next to me. So if it did burst into flames and explode, <laughs> I'm gonna know about it and not burn my house down. Okay, so I've turned the bike on. I've turned up the heat to full. 
and I'm going to plug in these two gloves. So we got one there. And here's the other. If you notice, as soon as I plug them in, they, uh, they light up and flash. So let's press that button. Nothing happens if I push it and hold it. Okay, so it's red, orange, green. So I'm going to put one on green and one on red, and we'll see how it changes. Uh, I should note that from what I read online, these gloves tend to run small. So I typically wear a large, but I had them send me an extra large. We'll see if that was a good idea. And I'm going to say yes. Oh, yeah, I'm, I definitely, I wear a large in gloves. These are extra large and they are a tight fit. So definitely uh, keep that in mind if you're looking to, to buy a pair of these. Okay, so I can definitely feel the heat starting up uh, more on the red one and the green. So obviously green is the lowest setting. So I'm gonna switch this one to red. Yeah, we'll have them both on red. Okay, um, I can definitely, oh, there's a nice feature I didn't notice. On the top of this finger, we have a, a wiper there so you can wipe rain off your helmet. That's nice touch. Okay, so I definitely feel heat coming across the tops of my fingers. I'm not sure if, yeah, I feel a little bit my thumbs and I can feel it across the top of the, of the knuckles, which is definitely where you want it. You don't want the uh, heat on the bottom of your gloves. Obviously, if you have heated grips, that doesn't really matter. But when you're out riding, uh, you, the tops of your hands and fingers are, is what really gets cold. So that's where you want that heat to, to be centered. See, they, they're not quite as warm as my Gerbing's gloves. Uh, I know the Gerbing's, when I have them on hot, they are hot. Uh, the only time I ever have my Gerbing's on the highest uh, temperature is when it's really cold. Uh, you know, nighttime, riding down close to freezing. Otherwise, they're just too hot. Now, these I've got on the highest setting and, I mean, they're warm, but they're definitely not hot. And I don't know. It's tough to say if there's actually any in the thumb or not. I would be very surprised if there's not because when you have your hand on the grip, uh, the thumb is one of the things that gets the coldest. And I'm, I'm really not feeling much in the way of uh, heat coming through there. Also, the, the, there's not much in between my thumb and the outer layer here. I don't feel much in the way of insulation. So I think they're depending entirely on the heat uh, from the, the electric uh, warmers to, to keep your hands warm. Okay, so I'm going to turn these off, we'll unplug them, and we'll give those batteries a try and see how much of a difference it makes. Now I am putting currently 12.1 volts because my bike is not running. So um, obviously if, if the bike is running, it's 13.8 volts, it's gonna be putting a little bit more uh, energy into the gloves. Uh, when it comes to heat, it's all about the watts. The watts are calculated as volts times amps. The amperage is determined by the resistance of the heat. So that's constant, that doesn't change. As you increase voltage, you put more watts, more energy into the gloves so they get hotter. So obviously at 12.1 volts, the bike just sitting here like this, they aren't gonna get quite as hot as when the bike is running. With these, um, these are only 11.1 volts. So I'm expecting these are not gonna get quite as warm. Now there is a pouch in here with Velcro where you can stash this battery, just like that. And then close it up. Um, something that these gloves don't have that I've seen other gloves is the uh, over glove, like a, a waterproof thing that you can put over the top of it. So I'm gonna have to open this Velcro on the cuff to get my hand in there because the battery is taking up an awful lot of space. Wow, okay, that's um, that's uh, pretty tight. Now I've got it on. I don't know if you can see that, but the, the battery is, is, it's tough to fit the battery in where they have this little pouch and it, it's, I mean, a considerable amount of room there. Uh, I think I might have, normally I would put the gloves over top of my jacket and zip the gloves, the gloves shut so that I don't get air into the end of my jacket. Uh, with how tight this is with the battery in there, I'm not sure I'd be able to do that. Okay, so I can definitely feel that the glove is warming up with running off this battery, so that's good. Um, they're, they're not uh, super warm, like I ex as I expected at 11.1 volts, it's, it's uh, 
not a huge amount of um, current being drawn. In fact, talking about current, I wonder just how much current these things are drawing. I think we're gonna have to test that out. Okay, so it definitely works with the battery as well. Uh, I will measure these and we'll have a look and see how long I expect these batteries to actually last. So I assume if I push and hold this, it's gonna turn off. Yes, and so now it's off. So I've hooked up this meter to show the current being drawn uh, by this glove. So we'll plug in this glove and see what we see. And as I expected, it turns on and then turns off and draws nothing. So when it's turned off, it's not pulling anything at all, so the battery won't drain. Now we'll turn it on. I'll hold it on and we'll see what we get. It jumps up to 700 milliamps and stays right about 700 milliamps, so 0 0.7 amps, which is about what I expected. So when I switch this to a lower setting, I'm not expecting to see these amps go down. What I'm expecting to see is it start turning on and off slightly. So let's see what happens. And that's exactly what we're seeing. So you can see it's turning it off and on. So rather than reducing the voltage or the, or the resistance, it's actually just switching the gloves on and off for a while. So you can see it's on for a little bit and it goes off. Then it waits and then it goes on for a little bit and then it goes off. And how the, the duty cycle of the amount of time on to off is what determines how much heat overall puts out. And, be, and because it heats up slowly, you don't notice that turning on and off. Uh, this is normally how heaters are actually run. This is exactly how I designed my bike PC to modulate the temperature as well. And just as a matter of curiosity, I'm going to try my Gerbing's glove and see what it draws. So 1.12 amps. So definitely draws more current than the uh, the Iron Jaws Jaws Iron Jaws gloves, um, as I expected from the amount of heat that I actually felt coming out of the gloves. And just for fun, let's uh, plug in my heated jacket and see what it draws. Four point six five amps, and I'm not going to unplug that because my power supply is only supposed to go up to three, and I don't want to blow a fuse. So, quite a bit more current there. So the current of these gloves pulls seven hundred milliamps. I did some back of the post-it note calculations here. So both gloves obviously draw one point four amps together um, at thirteen eight volts, which is what your bike normally runs at when it's running. Nineteen point three watts. So that's the energy dissipation of the of this unit is nineteen point three watts. You know, roughly 10 watts per each glove. At 11.1 .1 volts, which is what this battery supplies, uh, that's 15.5 watts of dissipation into both gloves, or roughly seven and a half, seven and three quarters watts per glove. By the way, if you haven't checked out the contest page on the Goldwing Dock site, now's the time to do it. Every month we give away a prize, free, no strings attached. All you gotta do is click enter. We've been giving away great prizes every month for over 10 years now. This month, you know what our prize is? These gloves. These gloves you've just seen me testing here and reviewing. This very pair is a December 2021 monthly Goldwing Docks contest prize. So if you wear large size gloves and you want to win these free gloves with batteries and all the stuff you just saw me demonstrate, go to the Goldwing Docks website, click on contest, or just click on the contest link in the description below. Okay, so you can work it with the battery or plugged in directly to the bike. I would probably use these plugged into the bike. Then you don't have to worry about your batteries dying. I've already got the hookup anyway. And you also get the benefit of having a little bit higher voltage from the engine running, which means you're gonna get more heat in the gloves. Okay, so it is cold day. It's a perfect day to test this. It's sunny, but it's cold. It's about 43 degrees, so about five degrees Celsius. Uh, I'll put these gloves on along with my heated jacket and gear. We'll go out for a ride and uh, I'll come back and let you know how they worked. Two hours later. I swear, every single time I go to make one of these videos, my neighbors decide it's the perfect day to get out the lawnmower and the leaf blower. 
So if you can hear that droning away in the background, I apologize. So I took these out on the road. Like I said, it was a cold day. Tried them out. Definitely produces lots of heat. Uh, for the temperatures I was riding in, I had no problem keeping my hands warm. In fact, my hands got a little bit war too warm. They were kind of warm and sweaty uh, at one point. I did not use the battery because, like I said, like I suspected, because of the amount of space this battery pack takes up inside the cuff, I was unable to get my jacket sleeve in here. Even when I undid this, this Velcro here, there was just not enough room. I could barely get my hand in there. That's a real problem with this in that the battery pack takes up so much room on the inside of the glove rather than the outside. I'm not quite sure why they did that. So it would make these as a battery powered glove a no-go for me. Now obviously you can buy these either with or without the battery and they are a lot more inexpensive without the battery. So if you wanted to wire it into your bike, you're gonna get more heat because you're gonna get that 25 watts rather than the 17 watts. And uh, you aren't gonna have to live with these batteries taking up all the space in there. Now, another option could be if you were to take the battery and use the Y cable that it comes with, plug one battery into the end of the Y cable, have that Y cable feed both gloves I suppose you could do that, and in which case uh, the battery would obviously run about a half as long, and when it wore out, you could maybe swap the battery. That way you could have the battery in your pocket or something along those lines. Thoughts while riding? Uh, I'm not quite sure why they have the wiper, uh, the visor wiper, only on the right glove, which is your throttle hand, and not on the clutch hand, because typically when you're riding, your left hand is your free hand. So if you need to wipe your visor, you're going to be using your left hand because your right hand is busy working the throttle. So why did they do that? I'm not quite sure. Sizing. As I mentioned previously, I wear a large in gloves. Every glove I own is a large. It's what fits me properly. These gloves are extra large because I ordered them based on the sizing that was listed on the Amazon listing for these gloves. And that's based on the diameter of your hand around the palm, around your knuckles. In that terms, it fits properly. So yes, it runs small. What I wasn't expecting was the length of the fingers. The fingers are extremely short, at least for my hands. I don't have really long fingers, but my fingertips were jammed up against the ends of the, of the fingers. Not uncomfortably so, but they were definitely right up in there. The bottom of the glove where you actually grab onto things is as thin as I thought. It feels quite thin, gives you nice feel. Um, I don't know that I would want to have these gloves down if it was like 35 degrees, simply for that reason. The amount of heat that was coming into the fingers was adequate. Like I said, my hands actually started sweating. The amount of heat going into the thumb is definitely less. Not that it's a, an actual problem, but again, if it was getting really cold out, I suspect my fingers would stay warm where my, fing my thumb might get actually a little bit cold. There is less insulation in them less overall power compared to, you saw the, uh, the current draw compared to my Gerbings gloves. Uh, so the Gerbings have more insulation. Uh, the Gerbings do not have any of this nice armor and the Gerbings draw more power. These have less insulation. They do have the nice armor. They draw less power. I would suggest that these are probably going to be good down to low 40s. Uh, below 40 degrees, I probably would not want to use these. I don't know that they would give me sufficient warmth in order to keep my, my fingers nice and really nice and warm. I did notice the, the felt liner inside when you, especially if your fingers are a bit sweaty, when you pull your hand out, it, it tends to try to come out with you a little bit. Uh, if you got your hands really wet, I suspect you end up, might end up pulling the liner out of the fingers and you'd have to push that liner back up in there. I have quite a few different gloves that have that exact same problem, including one of my rain gloves, which makes no sense at all. So overall, these iron jaws, and I, I, I thought it was iron gias, but looking at it, I think it's iron jaws is what it's supposed to be pronounced as. Would I recommend these for what they are? Yeah, they're, they're definitely um, not a premium glove, like, like you would see like the original Gerbings, not necessarily the Gerbings of today, but the original Gerbings, which are just a, in a top of the line heated gear. Um, these are definitely not that. However, these are a third of the price of what I paid for those Gerbings gloves. So if you don't ride a whole lot in cold weather and you can't really justify spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a, on a set of heated gloves, maybe these are what you wanna look for. The current draw, only one and a half amps between the two of them. Uh, it's not gonna affect anything. You can use these on any bike. Any bike is gonna have sufficient 
excess electrical capacity to run these. I would suggest that if you're a Goldwing rider that you probably just want to omit the battery. Get the cheaper one that just connects right into your bike. It's super easy to, to do. It means you don't have to worry about batteries discharging. You get more heat. It's cheaper and your bike has more than enough excess electrical capacity to run an extra amp and a half for these gloves even if you and your passenger both have them. There's nothing worse than having freezing cold fingers when you're trying to ride a bike. I can remember bad old days riding my GSX-R750. It was a, an 89 model that was still oil cooled and my fingers would just be frozen. I could barely work the brakes and I'd shove them down in the engine to try to thaw them. So I'd ride you know, one hand on the throttle and the other one shoved in the engine and just swap back and forth to try to keep my fingers functioning. Buying a pair of these is just, if you're gonna be riding cold weather, it's really a no brainer. Yes, you can get insulated gloves, but over time, your fingers lose the heat and they're gonna get cold. Whereas these, you're gonna stay warm. If you are only gonna buy one piece of heated gear, definitely gloves are the, is the one to buy. Number two on the list would be a heated jacket. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say yes, thumbs up for these. They're, they're not a premium glove, but they definitely work. They definitely keep your fingers warm. The heat is nice and evenly distributed. It comes with all the cables and accessories you need to hook it up and get it working. The instructions are dismal, but they're you know written in Chinese, so what do you expect? Incidentally, while I was out testing these gloves, I saw one other maniac out riding his motorcycle come in the other direction. And uh, you know, I lifted my hand to wave to him and he lifted his hand to wave to me. And as he did, I saw the wire dangling out of his glove. So heated gear is the way to go. As always, I'll leave a link to these gloves on Amazon down in the description. If you are gonna buy these gloves, please do use that, that link in our description because it is an affiliate link. It generates us a little bit of revenue uh, so we can keep bringing you these types of videos. If this video was of any use to you today, please click like, subscribe, and that little bell that lets you get a notification every time we post a new video. Also, leave a comment in the comments section down below. Let us know what you thought about this video. Give us an idea for other videos you'd like to see. And of course, don't forget to check out the Goldwing Docs forum. Lots of friendly people willing to help and just chat about motorcycles while we're waiting for the snow to come. Stay warm, stay safe. Thanks for watching.